This Richard back at you guys. Tuesday morning, you gotta love it. Almost five o'clock, 20 after four. Not too bad, we got a lot of work to get going. But hey guys, we got Chase's uh, training in the house. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of work to it. Uh, the vehicle makes 550 horsepower. It's a LS swap uh, truck, I believe. Doesn't, I don't have a year or nothing on the vehicle, but uh, 550 horsepower to 600 horsepower ought to be pretty stout. But what we've got is, we've got a, your normal 350 style case, steel dust cover. We're gonna be switching this over to a four wheel drive case with a cover out back I found for an aluminum cover that we're gonna get cleaned up that physically bolts here and makes the whole bell housing and everything a lot stouter. Um, these trains are bad about ripping the bell housing through here on both sides like this, it'll just break it right off. You get it all twisted up and four wheel drive and stuff like that. I'm not sure if he's, I don't think he's gonna take it to the river or anything. I think it's just a, a nice street toy is what he's building. So, but um, we're gonna take this unit apart, completely gut the case, put everything into this case here. So we've got a TCI drum coming, five clutch drum, uh, 34 element, 36 element style sprag. Um, really nice piece, it should be here tomorrow. Our overhaul kit and everything's coming in tomorrow too, so I really don't have much to show you. Now we do have a, a piston here uh, that we've had a machine down. We do about 10 to 15 of these at a time when we take them down to a friend of mine who has a machine shop down here. And we cut it down to the thickness of a clutch and a steel so we can put five clutches in third gear. So that's a must on, on these, on every one we do, whether it's a six cylinder or your grandmother's, we put five clutches in third gear on, on every one of them. Um, but what we've got here, I'm not sure if we're gonna be removing the passing gear cable on this. There is an option we can uh, block it, take it plumb off where he doesn't have to have it. And then when he wants to pull it down into passing gear, he can just manually shift it down into second gear and it's basically the same thing. A lot of people like to get rid of these. They can be just a pain, but they do work, so. Now we do have your modulator here on the side. Now we're gonna go back with a red stripe modulator, which it's not here yet neither. Everything will be here in the morning. But it's a high pressure modulator. Uh, it's got a screw in the side, inside that you can adjust for, to make your shifts earlier or later. Uh, the farther you screw it in, the later the shifts, the firmer the shifts. So it works really nice. We want to get this apart uh, real quick before five. So if we need to order a pump or something like that, actually we ordered a pump, didn't we? Yeah. We actually went ahead and ordered one. But we want to look at this one, see if we can just put gears in it, or or is it is it just junked out? Now this is your modulator valve here. It goes in here like this. Now these are spring loaded. Anytime you do one of these, you want to make sure this hole is clean all the way out the end. A little tiny hole right there that can get plugged up. Blow it out with air. Now on the side here, we have our intermediate accumulator. Your, this thing here um, really controls the second gear shift really well. If you take and leave the spring out completely, it'll firm up second gear. If you take and put the spring back in, it's gonna soften second gear. Uh, what we do, we'll leave it out when we build a racing unit like this one we're gonna be building. It's kind of like a racing unit, high performance, heavy duty. Uh, what we do is uh, leave the spring out, put new rings on here. Then when we go test drive it after we do all the other modifications, if we need to put the spring back in, we can. It, it's a simple fix on the outside of the tranny where we don't have to drop the pan. So leave it out, do the other modifications. I'm gonna show you what to do and uh, it'll work really nice. If you don't, if you think second gear is too firm, you can put the spring back in, boom, simple fix, okay? Now we have our governor here. Now, I should have showed you before I pulled this off, but anytime we put the governor in and, and put the cover back on, we, we want to check the, the distance this governor's moving back and forth, okay? 
It'll bottom out in here and it'll come out and hit the cover right here and pivot on this little point right here on the governor. We don't want this governor moving a quarter of an inch. So you can take and put this together and take and tap on this cover and sit here and adjust it and move it back and forth while you're tapping on it and just and getting that set to where you just barely want to move just a little bit like that. The more it moves, the more it's capable of knocking this cover off. Boom, 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 like a hammer. Bang, bang, bang. Not every tranny has this retainer that holds this cover on. So if you got, you're building a tranny and you got another tranny laying out there, go grab that retainer and put it on there. But if you set it like that, you're, you're not probably going to knock the cover off, but they will knock the cover off if you ain't careful. Make sure our buck is going to catch all of our goodies under there. pan actually looks pretty good for a 350. No magnet. No magnet, no. Just a lot of gray. Stuff like that. Now a lot of these 350 filters are reusable. They're going to be a mesh, brass, metal, plastic. This one here looks really nice. We can clean this up and put it back on there. Save the customer some money. Classic ones and the, you know, if you're really going to be in a high, high horsepower drag car, or turbo car, or something that's going to get really, really hot, dump the plastic, put a screen in there. But this tranny here, I don't see that's going to ever happen, so the plastic should be fine to go back with. So, But you do have a gasket in between your filter and valve body. Now, when we go and leave the passenger cable off these, what we'll do, this is a two stage valve right here. It's, it's, it's got a light spring right here, and then when it gets to the second one, it gets hard. Secondary spring. So what we like to do is we'll take this, uh, this, this uh, rod right here off, put it back on, and we'll take and bend it around this bolt right here where it's got this pulled just enough, but not pushing into the secondary part of the spring. And you can do it really, just take this off, put it back on, Take this bolt loose, wrap it around there, tighten the bolt down, and then take a screwdriver and get in here and check and make sure you're not pushing in on this valve. If you're pushing in any at all into the secondary part of it, it's going to be hung in passenger and it won't shift out. So we do a lot of these like that. So. Then just plug the hole in the case and then you're good to go. Kind of see what that looks like. Plenty long enough to take and wrap it around the bolt. And then you can see here, this valve right here, soft here and then it gets hard pushing in the secondary part of it. Just put it where it's like here but never go into the secondary part. Pretty simple. Now you can come and look through here, Trent. You can see the color of your pressure regulator spring right here. This one's blue looking. Shift kits are usually orange, yellow, uh, no color at all. Uh, blue, you don't very seldom see a blue color. <laughs> That's kind of an odd color for me to see. We don't see many 350s anymore, hardly at all. You got your little horseshoe or whatever you want to call this little S-shaped linkage here, sits in there like that. Now sometimes when you get it in there, you might have to bend this just a little bit because sometimes this will get kind of close to the edge and try to come out. Mm -hmm. And you can take and push, bend this just a little bit and make sure it stays in. Now since we're going to be uh, this is kind of showing you how to make one high performance with basically without a shift kit, okay? We're going to leave the cumulator spring out. 
we're going to come in here and we're going to block this valve right here in the valve body. What we do is we clean the valve body up and then Trent will come in here and TIG weld this valve right here where it won't move. Just come in there and hit it one good time and keep it from moving. And what that does is it gives it a manual capability. Now, it doesn't make it fully manual, but if you put it in low gear at 100 miles an hour, it's going to low gear. Uh, when you shift it, in, it will not shift out until you move the shifter. But when you put it in drive, it'll shift on its own. It'll shift just like a normal transmission. So if you want to do fully manual, you'll come in here and work on this governor. You can come in here and weld these, these out where they're stuck out. And then you can come in here and these spring paddles here on both sides, take and TIG weld a little spot right here where they don't move. So basically, you want everything blocked out. Put this back in, boom, it won't shift until you move the shifter. It, it'll take off. You put it in drive, it takes off in drive. You put it in second, it takes off in second. Now, what we do, too, is we like to come in here and grind just enough of this gear off right here where we can stick it back in the hole where it doesn't spin. Because we don't, it don't need to spin anymore. It just needs to just set in there and, and look cool. So, but that makes it that way. Now, your pressure regulator valve right here in the spring if I can get this out, kind of push in on that, and the pin will fall out, and then you can pull this out of here. Now, this is a blue spring here. This is probably out of a, 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 a six-cylinder or something. You know, I don't know what this, even though it's in a four-wheel drive, don't mean it come out in this four-wheel drive, the valve body or anything like that, so I'm going to squeeze you. Now what we'll do, uh, if, if uh, we're not going to put a shift kit in and try to save the customer some money, we'll go out to the trailer, find a good valve body. That we got so many valve bodies that probably already got shift kits in them out there. We've got so many of these things. And uh, put him a good pressure regulator spring in there. And if you got a green one, leave it in there. I mean, they're a really good spring. You don't even have to change it. Just leave it alone. Just clean it up and put it all back together. Now this spring here in the valve body, you can take it and leave it out, but what we like to do is take and put something in there just a little bit weaker. Okay, we're going to come over here and take this out really quick. It's a pretty stout little spring. Of course, it's going to make a mess. If Teresa was standing there, she'd be running. Run. We got Trent today. I'm standing so. strong, guys. I was waiting for her. So we got our retainer out right there. We're going to pull this out. And now we have this big old spring in here. You got to take it out and clean it anyway because every time you take a 350 part, there's a ton of sludge in here. Oh, yeah. You have to clean that out. If not, you might as well not even clean your tranny when you build it. But what we do is we like to get the 4L60E. Uh, fourth gear accumulator spring, the blue one, works really well. Kind of give it a, just a little bit of tug, a little bit of stretch, and you can put that in there and put this back together with that in there. And what I like it about the, I don't like this just to flop and because this keeper can come off. I like it to stay up all the time where it keeps the, the retainer in the down in the barrel of the, the piston here. But you can stick that on there Take your pliers, put your keeper back on, and then that'll step at the top. Cool. Really simple, okay? And then your boost valve, that looks like your small one goes in either direction, then you put that one in there. And then did the pressure regulator valve come out? No, it didn't. And then you have your pressure regulator valve too, like that. If you go out and find you a green one, I wouldn't put a blue because that's a car. Uh, find you a green one, that's usually a truck, car too, but the green ones, just are, they're a lot firmer spring. So, okay. Now to me, somebody's possibly already been in here. Just the way the gaskets are bonded to here and it's probably had water in it before too, the way the gaskets are stuck. But these two feed holes right here to your shift valves, we want to enlarge them. You can enlarge them to about 100 thousandths on both of them. And that right there makes a big difference on how this training is going to shift. Okay? Now, we're going to take this plate off the front here. 
and show you which tech balls to leave out too. Now remember, everything I'm showing you to do is without putting a shift kit in this, okay? It's going to work really good without having to buy a shift kit. I'm all about, if you don't have to, don't do it. But you can see these two holes we drilled, or they drilled, somebody already drilled them. We'll check the size and just verify the rot. But then also you have two check balls right here. There's four in the tranny, but the, this one here, this one here we're going to leave out. These two here, leave them in. Drill these two holes. Real simple. Okay. Of course, you have your engine brake servo here. Applies your engine brake band. You pull it down in a second. You get that hmm feeling. That's what comes on right there. If you notice, there's a little washer under here, though, that you can lose. See that little washer? Mm-hmm. So you want to be careful. Don't lose that. I'm not going to have to put that in my instant clean machine in there to get that off. Water is what usually sticks these gaskets like that. And you can just tell, there's some of them we can't even get off half the time. I'm taking a razor blade and a washer and all that kind of stuff. Woo. Oh, no, I don't have it on high. Yeah, I was doing uh, something over on my power glide I was building. I had it turned down. This is your park linkage here. Pretty simple. Moves the lever here and just locks it in the park. Pretty simple. Always put your new washers on your bolts when you build these back, and always put a little bit of sealant on your new washer too. That way you just know it's not ever gonna leak. Now this is a standard 350. They make a lockup 350, they make a 250. They make all kinds of different ones on this family right here, transmissions. Trent, you've only seen a couple 250s, huh? I've probably seen a couple 250s in my life. That's about it. I mean, uh -huh. we've, you just don't. 350s are getting very rare. Very rare. So, basically, we have our ceiling rings here, your three here. What we're going to do, we're going to leave this uh, center one off on the third one down here, the third one of the three. Okay? Now these two up here are your forward ceiling rings that move the vehicle forward. These three here are, the, are your reverse and your third gear. But we're going to leave this center one off right here completely. Now the rings we're going to be put back on here, they're a high pressure Teflon. They're orange in color. Uh, they don't have any, they just don't wear. These metal ones right here, uh, they just don't like pressure. So we'll be getting rid of all of those. I just don't have them here to show you. Our freight's been really messing with us really bad on getting parts and I mean it's it's really terrible isn't it Trent? It's dirt red and I feel like this is just the beginning and mm -hmm. we're running into it daily on different Everything. vehicles. Yeah. Just not this. And I'm sure you guys are uh, having the same issues we're having. Oh yeah. Um, I know we got a lot of people out there that watch our show and stuff that has shops and businesses and stuff like that so uh, believe me we feel your guys' pain when it comes to getting parts. And actually, we're, we're, we're not going broke, but we're, we're going broke buying inventory because we're buying everything we find. So it's really getting tough. Now, you notice we have a thrust bearing right here. Normally, when you see a thrust bearing here, there'll be a Teflon washer right under here, too. Not on the bottom, but it'll be look like a ceiling ring, but it'll be down here by that lube hole. Okay? Uh, normally on a bearing style. Now there is a, a washer style too that can go on here. Now you can see how they shimmed it up to get their clearances right. So we're kind of curious to see what that looks like on the inside. Now we have our intermediate clutch piston right here. 
Uh, this comes out of the pump, pushes uh, towards the clutch here and applies the clutch. Now, you got to remember, every time second gear comes on in this transmission, it's trying to shove the pump out the front of the transmission. So if you make this tranny shift really hard into second gear, every time it goes into second gear, it's trying to shove these, pull the threads out of these bolts. Every time. Four hundred or 350 is the only one that's like that. Your 250 has a band, so it, it doesn't have that problem. So that's why you really want to tighten your bolts good, uh, put the good sealant. You want to make sure your threads are really good in the case all the way around. Because there's your clutches right there. There's the piston that's applying them, and it's being pushed out of the pump. So now you can find a retainer too that the springs are made to it. Makes it really nice instead of having a, all the ones that fall apart. And what we're going for is a good looking pump. Looks pretty good right there so far. Look at our splines here on our stator. And then you want to come over here and look where your direct drum bushing runs. It can be wore out here even and not be any good. Even in your sealing ring grooves can be wore out. So you got, there's a multiple places. We'll put new bushings in here. We have a tool that steps it down into the right depth because the, the first one goes down in there pretty far and then the second one has to uh, be stepped down in there too. So. And then you have an option of a narrow and a wide right here. We always go back with a wide. So. We got our pump gears here. 350's got a nice pump, got a really wide gear. Uh, they'll take quite a bit of pressure. Kind of like, not like your power glide wheel. Now, this gear looks really good still, but what we'll do is we'll mic this gear because they made multiple thicknesses and get the right one and put it in here. You want to check your pump body all the way around where the back side of this gear runs. Looks really good. So now the problem is is getting pump gears. You know, I can call them and, and tell them what I have, and they'll say, "Oh, Richard, we don't have them." But then they call me back and say, "Hey, Richard, I got them in Colorado." I'm going, "Hey, send them to me, right, Trent?" You're right. <laughs> That's just what happened a minute ago on some power glide pump gears. Mm -hmm. But you can see here, our intermediate clutch has a wave. Look how big this intermediate clutch is massive clutch diameter so it don't take much to make this tranny hip firm into second gear and you never want to leave this wave out you leave this wave out you'll be pulling the tranny right back out because you won't want it to shift to second gear believe me we've done it all so. what we do is we leave the wave in and then we work on our accumulator spring over here Leave our check balls out in the in the case there. Now we drill our two holes in our valve body plate. And then we weld our valve in the valve body. Pretty simple. You can see how big those clutches are. And we have our engine braking band. This is what our Servo goes on, and this anchors in the case around the drum. You pull it down to second gear, bang, this comes on. You get engine braking. Pretty simple. Now this is the, the TCI drum that we have coming. That's, um, this is your normal style sprag. I'll show you what it looks like. Now this is going to be what we call a roller clutch style sprag. got rollers on it like that. You cannot put your your th your uh, dial, not dialed, but uh, your normal style 34 element sprag in this because it will not fit on this uh, inner locking mechanism right there, how you want to call it. So now the ring gear for the sprag, the outer uh, will retrofit. So, but this will not. Now, when our TCI drum comes, though, it'll have a hardened uh, outer gear, ring gear, high-pressure rings, 
we did not get it loaded so in other words it'll come empty we're going to have to put our piston in here that we shaved to get five clutches down in here you can see we have four so now when, when we have a, what we do is we mic this clutch and steel and we get a, a pretty general idea of what it needs to be we have them shaved and then we put it together and then on our our top hat right here they make multiple thicknesses of this land right here and that's how you set the clearances here I can go over there and get one that's plumb flat I can go out there and go over there and get one that's even taller than this I mean they make a multiple that way you can adjust uh, your clearances in this drum right here so pretty simple let me take this out really quick Trent and see show them what the piston looks like when it's shaved. That's all we shave off that piston to get five clutches in the drum. But we save all of these because they're getting hard to come by too. So anytime we go over there, he gets all mocked up to do it. He wants me to bring 10 or 15 of them. That way he can get them done. It'll last me a couple months or so. Now this is the seal that I was talking about, leaving off in the drum right here. You want to leave this seal totally out. By doing that, you're going to be using the whole piston here, the whole surface area from here to here to apply the clutch instead of just using this area from here to here. And when you leave this ring off right here, you're doing the exact same thing as leaving this seal off right here. Okay? Now, you don't want to leave these two off and don't do no modifications to the valve body or, or to the plate or anything because then you could starve it uh, from getting enough fluid to apply that big surface area. So you definitely want to do your two holes and stuff like that too. So leave your check balls out. You definitely want to leave both these seals on. But do your piston. Pretty simple. You have a bearing here. Always a bearing there. No thrust washers. And then we're going to have our forward clutch. We don't modify the piston or anything on this one here because we've got five clutches in the forward drum. This drum doesn't come on under an 8,000 RPM shift or 6,000 RPM shift. It only comes on under idle in gear, unless you have a young kid driving and he wants to neutral drop it. Then it comes on at whatever he desires. <laughs> We've had them come in here too, huh, Trent? Plenty. Plenty. And try to lie. <laughs> try to lie about it, yeah. <laughs> but you do have a wave here. Now, we will be putting the wave back in because we don't want him to be having harsh engagements, customer complaints, and have to pull it back out and put a wave in here. We already have five clutches. We're good to go. Now, if I was going to build this for a, a race car or something like that, and he's got a 3,500, 4,000 stall converter, we might think about leaving the wave out. But four-wheel drives, when you leave the waves out, it, you just get aggressiveness, bangs in the gear hard, back and forth. It, it just makes it terrible. So that's not something you really want to do. Check your shafts out here, down in here, for any bushing wear, because that's where your stator bushings are going to be running. If you have wear on the shaft here, you can have converter drain back, where you set this vehicle in park for four or five days, and you go back in and it doesn't want to move. So all your bushings need to be good all the way through this area right through here. Your pump stator, that way everything's nice and tight. Your gears need to be tight. That way that fluid doesn't leak by. Now you notice here uh, this Teflon little bushing fell out. So that's down in your output shaft here. Now they make different ones. We can go back with that plastic one or we can go back with this brass bushing. You can press it down in the shaft right here. And it does the same thing, okay? And then they updated the plastic. So either way, uh, high horsepower race car is going to get tons of heat in it. We'll go back with the bushing, but the plastic does work really nice. So pretty simple. And then we have our forward ring gear, the plastic thrust washer here, a metal thrust washer here. And they do make metal ones you can put here. Four tab, J 
check it here for any type of wear, buff it up really good with some scotch bright, put it back together. Now if I can get this snap ring out of here. Wow, there we go. Hmm. One handed, look at that. Of course, we have a four pinion planet. That's all you're going to be putting in these. Just check for any type of thrust washer wear, any type of wobbling. Check around here where this bushing right here runs. Right through here, we can see wear there a lot of times. Same way with this four tab washer here. They make that in brass too, just like those. So, replace all your bushings. Look at your sun gear on both sides, this end and this end so sometimes you got to take it apart to look at it really good but always replace your bushings now we're going to get down in here and get this frag out assembly out low roller clutch if it'll come out ooh the case looks pretty war ooh that's probably not going to come out wow did you see that did you just see that too Trent yeah uh, Can y'all see how this case is starting to strip right here? Okay, hold on, yeah. How that support's turned? Yeah. You got your right anti-clunk spring right there, but see how that support's turned and it's up under that, that tab right there, mm -hmm. that leg all the way around? Well, let me tell you, to get that out of there, it's going to take some work. Because wow. that there's almost cut all in half. Look at that, how far that's turned over wow. here, too. Wow. Luckily, you brought a new case. I didn't even look to see if his new case is good right there. Well, you want to check that out? Let's look at that really close while we're here. So, he does have some wear there too. Uh -huh. We don't like using case savers. You can see it right there. See how that's wore? So, we might have to go out back and see if we can find him another case. I just don't like sticking case savers in right there. These things already make enough popping noises and stuff and you go to park and reverse and drive and stuff like that. and. And that's what you see, what a lot of the clicking noise you hear is that support banging back and forth and with that anti-clunk spring in there trying to stop it and it just can't do it. So, but guys, I really would like to get that out of there. But when we do get it out, we'll, this is gonna be a narrow sprag assembly right here. We'll go out back and get us a wide 4L60E sprag assembly in here and put that in there. That'll be a really big upgrade. If the planet's uh, Got a washer in between the planet and the lower uh, ring gear and stuff. We're going to be trying to find a roller bearing style for this. I should have something out there in the trailer too that we can update that to a roller bearing too and get all the thrush washer out of the bottom of this because we know he's going to be putting a lot of load in four wheel drive low because I, I think he does a lot of. Um, did he say something about pushing snow and something like that, Trent? Put something on the front of it? I'm not for sure. I was thinking this what. I, th I was thinking that's what he does. It's going to be running around low gear a lot, so that'll be a plus putting that roller bearing in the bottom. So guys, you can see you got a, a lot to do to a 350 just to make it work, but you can make one really work really good with hardly nothing. I mean, that, that that's just these little tricks I, I'm kind of telling you, so it's pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. But guys, don't forget to subscribe, uh, push that like button and all that type of stuff Trent says to do. And uh, definitely we got uh, a lot more show to come and y'all have a great day.